Welcome to the Edgar Rice Burroughs mini podcast, episode number 16. These short podcasts are meant to supplement the full-length episodes I host with Jess Terrell and Scott Stewart, in which we usually discuss one of ERB's novels in detail. Now, currently, we're using the mini-podcast to do a chapter-by-chapter analysis of the 1912 novel, Tarzan of the Apes. In this episode, we'll be talking about Chapter 8. Now, please note that I will be including spoilers for both this novel and occasionally for later novels in the series. I'd also recommend that you take a few minutes to reread the chapter, as I'll be assuming you're familiar with it as we discuss it. Now, chapter eight is titled The Treetop Hunter, and once again, we see Tarzan's ability to learn, both from experimentation with new ideas and from experience. Burroughs remind us, reminds us that Tarzan has figured out he's not an APE, but an MAN. And when the apes huddle in fear and discomfort during a raging tropical storm, Tarzan begins to realize the purpose of the clothes that he has seen the men wearing in the picture books. They would provide him with the protection from the elements. Burroughs' description of the storm, by the way, is vivid and exciting. He really was a master wordsmith and storyteller. And Burroughs uses the storm to once again show us Tarzan's intelligence and his ability to learn. Tarzan wants clothes. And at the beginning of the chapter, we're reminded of the enmity that exists between Tarzan and Saber the lioness. So Tarzan now wants to figure out how to kill Saber and take her fur to use as clothes. It's a logical and reasonable chain of thought that continues to build up just how different Tarzan is from the apes. And there's another and very human reason Tarzan wants clothes that's very much representative of the logic of a child. When younger, he was embarrassed by his hairless skin. Now, as he realizes he's a man, and that according to the picture books, men wear clothes, we see a child's pride and egotism at work without an adult to guide him. He's a man, therefore men must be awesome and better than apes, therefore he should wear clothes like men do. Now, Tarzan comes up with a plan to lasso Saber around the neck and pull her up so that she would be helpless and easy to kill. Once again, Tarzan is using more sophisticated thought uh, uh, to make his plans than the apes could ever manage. He's also smart enough to know that he should practice and to learn from what happens to him while he practices. The bit with the bit with Horde of the Bull, the Horde of the Boar rather, who pulls Tarzan out of the tree when he's lassoed, is both an exciting bit, bit of action and a realization for Tarzan that he needs to modify his plans before going after Saber. The chapter ends with his unsuccessful attempt to catch and kill the lioness. He learned from the incident with Horta to tie the other end of the the rope to a branch, but he doesn't consider that Saber would be too heavy for Tarzan, who, remember, is still a boy at this point, Uh, be too heavy to lift once caught. Also, he didn't consider that Saber would eventually bite her way through the rope and escape. So typical of Tarzan's storytelling skill, the attempt to kill Saber is exciting and well-written, but it also shows Tarzan is still learning. Um, but he, that he is very capable of learning. As an adult, he'll have the ability to dispatch lions in straightforward hand-to-hand combat. As a teenager, he needs to be more wily in his attacks, but Burroughs shows us that he's slowly getting to the point where he'll be able to do this. That's it for now. If you're enjoying these podcasts, please take time to leave us a good review on iTunes. And once again, my name is Tim DeForest. Please visit my blog at Comics, Old Time Radio, and other cool stuff where you can also find a link to my Amazon.com authors page. Keep an ear out for future episodes of this podcast, and thank you for listening.